I think we'll probably get started uh, so we don't take too long today. We've got quite a bit to get through in this session. Um, welcome to Drupal 8 Ready. My name's Christopher Skeen um, and my colleague Boris Gordon is uh, sitting over there in the comfy chairs, um, which would be quite good for him for most of this talk. Um, today, today's session is about helping you prepare for Drupal 8. And uh, w what we're going to do is reduce Drupal 8's really long change list down to a number of kind of um, useful, actionable things that you can do uh, to get you ready for Drupal 8 when it launches, hopefully early next year. Um, and if you saw the keynote, as I'm sure most of you did, you've already got a bit of prep for this session. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the same things um, in a bit of a different way. There are over 500 uh, Drupal 8 change records. Some of these are relatively minor. Um, they might be a <clears throat> signature change for a function or something else that, that you can probably pick up later on. But others are quite significant, such as a new API or uh, a new way of doing an old thing. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff to look through here, and it's very difficult for the average um, <clears throat> developer to go through all of these and work out what all the changes are. Depending on how you count them, there's also 24 odd new APIs or changed APIs. Um, depends what you call an API, really. But there's quite a high number. Um, and some of those are quite important, some of them not so important. So we're going to filter out some of those today as well. The subject of this presentation is to distill those changes down for you so you can prepare for Drupal 8. So what are we going to cover? We're going to look at changes and additions in Drupal 8. We're going to break them down by role and by technology group. Then we're going to give you some learning resources for each thing in case you need to go away and actually find out what it is or how it works. Uh, and finally, we're going to give you some pointers to um, relevant Drupal concessions that are on for the next couple of days. Um, we can't provide the level of detail that's needed to really get into any of these, but they can. It's also worth noting that the Drupal 8 API is still in flux. It's still changing, um, not in a major way, but just in a minor way. Details are changing. Um, so what we talk about here today, you know, it might shift a little bit before it releases, but that's all right. In preparing this session, we've tried to work out what skills are actually important. Uh, what do you need to know? Um, what do you not need to know? And we've put together this skills matrix, which I know you can't read. Um, we looked at the skills required for three groups, uh, site builders, themers, and developers. And we looked at how these skills uh, started if you came on at Drupal 6, what skills you needed there, um, how that might have changed in Drupal 7, and, and what you might have needed for Drupal 8. Um, this diagram is available on our website. Um, if you want to dig into it, it includes some extra stuff that we're not going to cover today. Uh, and I'll give you a link for that in a second. <clears throat> um, it's also slightly out of date. This was made probably a month ago, and I reckon there's a few things we'd remove and a couple of things we might add now. But the, the bigger picture is, is still correct. If you started with Drupal 6, you, you actually had quite a lot to learn. This is tribal knowledge, as Dries mentioned in the previous presentation. When you transitioned to Drupal 7, you actually still had quite a lot to learn again. Drupal 7 had a really steep learning curve, which is something um, a lot of us forget. And if you started with Drupal 7, you wouldn't have even come across that. And I guess in our opinion, despite some of the uh, rumors to the contrary, Drupal 8 doesn't introduce a significantly large number of Drupal API changes. It introduces a few big ones, but they're not, it's not an unusual number for a new Drupal release. Um, however, for the first time, it does introduce a significant number of new programming paradigms for developers. Uh, and that's, um, that's where some of the, the issues are coming in currently. For most of the categories that we've looked at, uh, the relative number of changes has been fairly small. So just roughly, if you started with, uh, with Drupal 6, you had to learn maybe seven new skills for a site builder. Drupal 7 only introduced a few. Drupal 8's got a few more. Again, for themers, this one's pretty static. Um, the major one in Drupal 8 is that Twig has changed, but in Drupal 7, you kind of had to learn render arrays, and frankly, that's harder. So. 
Uh, and when we're talking about the Drupal API, the number of major changes in the Drupal API has been fairly stable as well over those three versions. Um, Drupal 8's introducing more, but, but it's, not, it's not a lot. What is different is perhaps the number of other skills that you'll need to learn. Uh, and we're going to focus on some of those today. So these skills are mostly related to object-oriented programming and kind of modern PHP programming practices, um, as well as some expertise in other libraries and tools. It's this part which, which I think personally cause some, causes some of the, um, the FUD around Drupal uh, and perhaps leads to forks potentially. Um, the good news is that these are not really Drupal skills. Uh, they're actually really good programming skills. So if you've got them already, you'll find it relatively easy to move into Drupal 8. And if you don't have them, then learning them is going to make you a better developer, a better member of your team, um, and probably make you happier as well. So fundamentally, we want to help you skill up today. From today's session, if you haven't learned something new, you know where to find it. Um, and as you go through, if you like, you, you may wish to jot down, just keep a tally of the skills that we, we list, and see how you go, one point per slide, and then at the end you can compare your scores and see how you're going. <clears throat> we've also got an awful lot of resources in this presentation, so we've made sure they're all available on our website, previousnext.com.au slash Drupal 8 Ready. That links through to three discussions, um, listing all the things we're going to talk about, so you don't feel you need to have to copy down everything crazily. Um, you can jump through there. All right, so let's go. <clears throat> the first of our three sections, site builders. What's new for site builders? Well, it's point and click, but not as we know it. There are seven significant areas uh, for site builders that site builders are going to need to learn for Drupal 8. Um, now, if you're a themer or if you're a developer, you kind of need to learn these as well. So these sort of stack up on top of each other. Um, if you're a site builder and you don't want to hang around after this section, by all means, that's fine. The first one, um, and I think this is really significant, is the use of schema.org. Um, instead of using RDF mappings from a range of vocabularies, Dublin Core, FOF, semantically interconnected online communities, et cetera, et cetera, Drupal uses um, <coughs> content mappings purely from schema.org. Uh, for example, where we previously had the Dublin core title, we now just use the schema name. Um, nobody really understands RDF or RDFA or RDFA Lite or any of these other technologies we've been using previously. Uh, and despite the fact that they're really great, they're really hard to use. And that's kind of how schema.org came about. So Dries has already shown you um, some SEO examples, <clears throat> which is good. That's the benefit that you get from it. However, as a site builder, you're going to want to understand how schema.org structures content. Because all your content's going to come out with schema.org markup pretty much by default, you're going to want to know um, when you're adding new fields how to relate those to that structure, how to add properties, and how to maximise your opportunities there. There's not a whole lot of resources you need for that, but it's good just to go on schema.org and have a little look. The second one is REST for web services. Um, so using the new REST and serialization APIs, you can output uh, data as JSON and HTML. Um, a great deal of what we do online is um, <coughs> coming through apps and other services. So this is a, a great new tool actually for site builders as well as developers um, to think about how they structure their content and how it ends up coming out the other side. There's a good, um, if you don't know what REST is, because it can be a con bit confusing if you're new to it, there's a good example there, uh, what is REST explained using Starbucks, which I recommend you check out. And um, uh, Lynn Clark and Clousy have a session, Wednesday, 1 o'clock, uh, REST and serialization in Drupal, which is good. <clears throat> blocks in Drupal 8, finally getting some love. Blocks have been around since Drupal 1, pretty much. They have hardly changed at all. Um, they're finally getting fields and revisions. Um, they're, kind of, they're entities, effectively. Uh, so they'll act a bit more like nodes, and that's great. It really makes it much easier to build um, interesting sites. Not all of the tools that are needed for blocks will probably go in. I don't think the um, UI for revisions will make it in, and it will probably end up in contrib, but um, it's all coming. Uh, and there's a good session blocks from drop.org to Drupal 8 and beyond. Um, Wednesday 10.45. If you're interested in the Drupal API, that's also a really good one for you because it kind of talks about that. It's a bit more developer-y.
Having CK Editor in core is just one of the um, several editing improvements, and Idris has covered these a lot, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. But um, a good session for this is uh, designing Drupal 8 with Lewis Nyman and Bohan, uh, Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Um, I think most people can probably work these out for themselves, but I, we do think it's fairly important and significant. One that you might need a bit of help with, however, is Tour API, because this is kind of a site builder um, tool, if you like. This is a, uh, Tour API gives you the ability to add um, contextual tours to individual pages. You can stick in little pop-ups that open up and give information uh, for people when they come along. Um, Tour API was uh, added by members of our team at Previous Next, and there's a little bit of stuff on our website about creating a tour. They're actually really easy. You can create tours just by writing a bit of um, a YAML file. Um, so it's not too hard, and a skill that most people, I think, can learn. <clears throat> Only a couple more things for site builders, really, that we think are important. The first one is configuration, import, and export. Um, if you've used features before, you, you know what this is, uh, and you know how it works. Um, the way it's working in Drupal 8, it's a bit simpler, actually. It's kind of your entire site gets dumped to config. Um, but it's, uh, it's something to consider and something to look up on and make sure that when you're, uh, you're building your site, you're aware of how this is going to work. There's, um, there's an article managing configuration in Drupal 8 um, on the website there, and uh, configuration management and features by Andrea Paschetti is also a really good resource. Finally, the other big change that we think is important for site builders is the move away from node IDs and other identifiers to UUID. Um, UUIDs are basically universally unique identifiers if you haven't come across them before. Um, and they're going to start turning up all over the place. So just knowing what they are and how they work is, uh, is quite useful. There's some other... Um, Oh, that's the wrong slide. That's the theming slide. <clears throat> Let's move on. Um, if you're a site builder and um, you don't want to hang around for themers, you actually might want to run into the Panorama Hall right now and see Drupal 8 for site builders with Swintel, the display suite author. I won't be offended if you leave. <clears throat> All right, themers. What's new for themers? Um, again, about seven things for themers. Um, one of these is, is fairly important, uh, and it's the top one on this list, and it's Twig. Um, it's important, but I don't believe it's particularly difficult. Twig is a templating uh, language written for PHP. Uh, replaces PHP template for template files, as Dries has already outlined. Um, and it has a number of improvements. It's much simpler. It doesn't contain that crazy render function that appeared in Drupal 7. Um, and it's generally pretty easy to use. Uh, so that's a, a big plus that we've got that in there now, and hopefully that will lead to a bit more adoption. Um, Twig is available uh, from Sensio Labs, um, and there's good documentation there, and the Drupal 8 theme guide's already been updated, which is awesome. If you want to go and see more sessions on Twig, however, there's loads. Um, Twig and the new theme layer in Drupal 8, uh, 5 o'clock today. Um, Twig, a templating system for designers, tomorrow 10.45, and Twig at Ship It, which is a lab um, so that's a good two hours of Twig practice for you tomorrow at uh, 1. Perhaps more complex is Backbone.js. If you're a front-end designer, themer, and you're looking at creating um, interesting JavaScript-powered web apps, then Backbone.js is your new best friend. Um, Backbone is a JavaScript library which essentially provides a, a model view design paradigm um, for single page web applications and it, it keeps your Drupal data kind of front and centre for you. So that's what it's there for. Um, well documented on backbonejs.org. The Drupal stuff is not particularly well documented but you can check out the current implementation of the Backbone module um, which has a good, good stuff there and there's a presentation uh, with DealAnswer today at 3.45. Drupal 8 has um, a good deal of responsive design in it. Uh, and we've put this one in even though it's not really a Drupal thing because we kind of feel it's important. Um, Drupal 8 is responsive out of the box. Uh, and if you're not able to design and build responsive sites then over the top of it, then 
you're at a bit of a loss, you're at a bit of a competitive disadvantage. Um, so we think responsive design is, uh, <clears throat> practices are a really important thing that needs to be learnt for Drupal 8. Um, and also just using some of the built-in features like the picture element, uh, the breakpoints module, just to produce uh, better quality sites. Therese also mentioned the JavaScript accessibility features, which is really good. Um, one of the things that Drupal's been working towards for a, for a number of years now is um, kind of back to front accessibility. Um, I don't know what, what you call it in Europe, but in America it's section 508. In Australia we use WCAG. You may use WCAG here as well. I hope you do. Um, there's a couple of new JavaScript tools that allow you to produce more accessible websites. Um, Previous Next recently did work for Disabil Disability Care Australia, which is Australia's national disability insurance scheme. And um, we had to make sure that was well and truly accessible. And this kind of tool would have been very, very useful on that project. So the two accessibility features are Drupal.announce and Drupal.tabbing manager, if you're looking for them. Drupal 7, I think, uses jQuery 1.4. Does that sound right? Yep, someone says yep, good. So Drupal 8's going to use uh, what is effectively jQuery 1.9. However, without support for IE 6, 7, and 8. Um, that may be significant if you work with government or other clients that actually have these legacy browsers, because you'll actually have to find a way to get 1.9 back in there. Um, the latter part is intended to be provided by Contrib, however, currently I, I don't see anything. That, that's fine, that may happen. Um, they're more or less the same, 1.9 and 2.0, except that 2.0 just doesn't have that compatibility layer. Two more things that um, themers are gonna wanna watch out for in Drupal 8. The first is that there are new CSS coding standards. Now, most of the time, coding standards generally apply to core. However, if you're writing a module or you're working on a patch for a module, coding standards really help you to um, create a solid base for your uh, work and make sure that people aren't um, updating your patches purely on formatting grounds. Um, <clears throat> so the Drupal 8 CSS standards are in there. They're really useful and they're a good resource and I encourage you to use them. Finally, and perhaps somewhat controversially, um, we believe that uh, themers are going to need to learn a little bit about PHP class and namespace usage. There's a lot of new object-oriented code in Drupal, and you don't really need to know how it works. But you need to know what a namespace is. You kind of need to know how to call a static method on a class. Um, because you may find yourself doing this while in a theme, um, template.theme file or similar. If you're writing pre-process functions or doing any of that kind of work, some of the functions that you've called previously um, just as functions are now going to be static methods on objects. So having a little bit of an understanding about how these work is going to help you immensely to work your way through there. You don't need to know how to write object-oriented code, but you do need to know a little bit about how to read it. Um, some other minor changes as well. Some of the functions that you've used previously as a thema have gone. Um, uh, CSS and JS are now added using an attached property on the render array. Um, Drupal set title is gone. Uh, and there's a new breadcrumb API in there as well if you need to do breadcrumbs. Um, most themers, however, I suspect will probably just use a module for that. So I'm going to pass over now to um, Boris, who's going to do the, the bulk of this talk um, for developers. Boris. Hello. So, how many developers here? Everyone. Okay. And uh, how many uh, have, have left learning Drupal 8 up until this week and are kind of hoping to really get a grip on it? And the rest of you know Drupal 8 already. Okay, good. All right. So, th there's um, quite, a, quite a few uh, changes and we just tried to compile uh, sort of the, the, the must-knows. Um, um, and some, some of them are quite big, but they're really not that hard. And um, uh, the main one is really just object-oriented in general. So I'm actually quite curious. Uh, who here is a primarily a Drupal programmer 
and only does OO in like Drupal 7, doesn't have much of a background, nobody. One, two, there must be more, come on. All right. Well, um, it's a, a lot of Drupal 8 uh, uh, is gonna be really getting everyone up to speed with where PHP is uh, today. Um, so that basically means 5.3 and above, and more than that, best practices and patterns that that uh, that, uh, that that makes it easier. And uh, as Chris said, the, the beauty of learning this stuff is it, it's not hard. Um, and uh, if you have uh, hiring problems, for instance, I think you might find that uh, you'll find. Uh, I know that when I when I engage with the PHP community. Um, we're more likely to have discussions that involve things like factory methods and dependency injection um, than at in, when we engage in the Drupal community. So, uh, you know, the, the beauty of this is that we're really opening up and um, finding, uh, uh, joining the rest of the PHP world. So, uh, that, that's really the big takeaway. And uh, this is a great, if you haven't learnt this stuff, this is the perfect week uh, to, to really dive in. Uh, I'm gonna recommend a bunch of sessions to go to, um, sort of some of the some of the top things, and uh, and then, of course, the code sprint, which is uh, the best way to learn. So, uh, if you're, it sounds like most people are, are th think they're pretty comfortable with uh, object-oriented PHP, but um, if you if you have only done OO in PHP, sort of in the old days and uh, aren't used to some of these patterns. It's more, more than just the syntax. So I'm sure everyone's comfortable with the syntax, but it's more important to, to kind of uh, understand uh, some, of these, some of these patterns and paradigms. And so here's some, here's some good resources. Um, uh, there's a, a great book there at the bottom, uh, which uh, really covers a lot of this stuff. And, and this website, PHP the Right Way, is probably the, the first place to go. And it'll, it'll take you through um, uh, everything uh, everything that, that's uh, best practice in, in PHP world, and that's, that's an updated resource as well. Um, and it's very much in line with where, where Drupal 8 uh, development is heading, so. Um, as for sessions on uh, this topic, uh, there's a, a great uh, uh, general object-oriented session, uh, which I, I heard went over quite well uh, in uh, DrupalCon Poland, and, um, and probably the the one that the one that might seem a little bit strange there is I've, I've recommended uh, Drupal development using PHP Storm because again if you're coming into this new you may have um, I'm assuming that people haven't really played with core here because um, uh, it's a, a beginner session but one thing that might throw you off is if you're used to using a, a, a text editor in the, in this case tooling matters if you're used to using a text editor that uh, doesn't help you out um, we've got lots of files lots of directories and um, Having, having some interesting tooling that can help you navigate that uh, really uh, takes some of the friction out. So I, I recommend um, going to that and just seeing, if you haven't really seen a, a, an IDE like that, you're used to using, using something a bit simpler, and then, and then going away and, and uh, getting your tools uh, a bit sharper, maybe uh, uh, upgrading your text editor, et cetera. So the big one that everyone's aware of is uh, Symphony 2. Um, so uh, the the beauty of, of um, having Symphony two components um, really at the at the core of, of Drupal eight um, is uh, actually documentation. So there's been a bit of bit of fud around um, around sort of you know how, how complexity and how difficult it is to learn. But actually, I think that these bits of Drupal core have never been better documented and, and easier to learn. So they're just in different places. So um, I think it's you know, important just to, to make sure we all understand that we're not, we're not talking about the full stack framework. So apart from a learning exercise, you don't really wanna go to the Symphony 2 site and, and download the full stack documentation and, and go through it. Um, there's useful stuff in there, but even better is the component documentation. And it's every bit, you could literally take a class uh, from that we're pulling in from Symphony, and go to the Symphony site and get a really, uh, really detailed uh, explanation of, of how to use it, and it's all all applicable. Um, so uh, it's a big step up. Um, 
in, uh, in understanding some of this core stuff. So there's some, some resources. And some great sessions, of course. Um, uh, Alex Pot about this uh, approach of pulling in these uh, external uh, libraries, so he'll have more to say about that. And, uh, and if you're interested in, in the Symphony project and sort of um, uh, their approach to, to uh, componentizing and, and, and standardizing and, and, and all those sorts of things, I've saw PSR zero and, and the, uh, the, the real reasons why we're doing this, if you want to understand that, go to the Fabian uh, Potentier talk. So this is um, not an API per se, or um, uh, any, any kind of change at that level, but this is a tool that you really need to start to get familiar with. Um, this is the Composer. So who, um, if you don't know Composer, you may know something like Drushmake, for instance. So this is um, a tool that will uh, pull in external dependencies, or any, any dependencies, really, um, and manage versions and, and do, do all sorts of wonderful things. And uh, we're using that to pull in the, the, the bevy of, of external code, not just the Symfony components, but uh, things like um, uh, Guzzle was mentioned before and, um, and Zen feeds and, and some other things. Um, now this is, uh, it's actually, it's quite a fun tool to use. So. Um, I recommend ha having a look, and uh, we, we started to use it on our projects uh, in general. So we use it to manage uh, even Drupal 7 projects. Uh, you, can, you can use it today, and um, that really makes, makes managing external dependencies a lot easier. And there's a core conversation from Eclipse CC, so you're covered there. Okay. So this is a, a bit of a simple one, but um, it's another external dependency. It's another chunk of code that we've we pushed out, and um, uh, I'm not, not sure you need to really un understand uh, the component, but you just need to know how to read YAML. And I think that's, you know, the short, the short of it is that we, we now have uh, effectively a, a moving from an info file world, I think, you know, that may end up disappearing altogether, um, and not having to manage our own, our own metadata and, and configuration things. We now can use things like YAML and, and JSON. And, um, and get all the, the, the security attention and, and not have to maintain it ourselves. So that's focus, focus on Drupal. So um, have a qu if you're totally new to YAML, um, probably quick, quicker just to open up, open up a YAML file in the Drupal core code and have a look. All right, so this is a, this is a big one. And this is uh, really the reason why um, uh, looking forward, why we're, do, well, why we're going to a lot of this effort with the, the re-architecting. So, um, simple test, as, as it stands in Drupal 8, simple test is still there, and it's uh, recommended for the web tests, as far as I know. Um, uh, but unit, unit tests are now recommended that we slowly start uh, implementing them in a, a, new, a new testing framework. Um, and the goal is, uh, well, it's a couple of things. Once, one is PHP unit is better supported project. Um, so that's, again, along this, along this track of, of kind of uh, reusing a lot of the PHP world's tools. But more important than that, um, it's going to encourage us to actually have a unit testable code. So um, in, in Drupal 8, you'll notice uh, when you go through the files, uh, everything's split out. So instead of, instead of functions, we have things in classes. The classes are much smaller, and there's ma many files all the way through. But each of those the goal is to, to test them uh, independent of the other pieces. And that's why we're, why we're pushing for dependency injection. If you've heard this word, you're not quite sure, kind of know what it is, but you don't, don't know why, why we're really pushing for it. It's so that moving forward, we can build this more, more robust uh, unit tested and I isolated code. Um, and so it's good to see that we've, the ball is rolling. Um, we'll have a mixed, mixed approach for, for uh, Drupal 8 it's looking like. Um, a lot of core, uh, core components are already, already have converted uh, their unit tests to PHP unit. Um, and you can, you can use that today uh, in, your, in your modules. Um, 
and there's two wonderful sessions. So highly recommended, um, one from the author of PHP unit and one from uh, M. Sonnenbaum about writing, how to actually write unit testable code in Drupal 8. So one, once you see it in action, um, it, it ma makes more sense. It's pretty amazing to be able to uh, run a test that takes a, a fraction of a second rather than simple tests that we're all used to where we do a full install uh, every time we want to run a test. I'm hoping that the fan on my laptop will stop blowing up every time I want to run tests. All right, so we have a, a few, uh, few extra libraries that are pro probably probably good to look into. The main one is Guzzle, really. Um, what, you know, it's, a, it's very common to, to, um, have to have to fetch out. Um, uh, and we've used Drupal HTTP requests. That's totally gone now. So we've put in an external, uh, external library to do this. It's more robust. It's well supported. It's well tested. We've already started using it on Drupal 7 projects. Um, it's um, really, uh, really a, a, a good step forward. The API is very, very easy, so you can just look that up yourself. N uh, not much else needs to be said. Um, easy RD RDF is a, a, along with similar lines. Um, these, are, these other ones are mainly used um, in core, but they're there. They're there for you to use. But Guzzle, you will most likely use. So I, I recommend uh, adding that to your your Drupal 8 packing list. Okay. So now we, we're kind of into a, a quick overview of some of the um, sorry, uh, some of the architectural changes um, uh, that you'll want to look. So that's um, some more background. One, once you've got your, your your sort of basic OO, have a quick look at dependency injection um, uh, in some of the resources listed before. Um, then you can look at some of the Drupal specifics. So so these are these are. Uh, these build on top of, of the, uh, the uh, object-oriented best practices, and um, we can start with plugins. Now, this is a this is a great one. So this um, this effectively replaces uh, info hooks. So uh, hook block info, etc., is a, a good example, um, and it lets us um, uh, have have uh, these kind of uh, one module extend another module and uh, override and and do it all in a nice clean way um, and this is uh, this is actually a bit of a, a, a bit of an innovation in, in in Drupal 8 it's very much inspired by CTools plugins um, in its purpose but it's a, a totally uh, modern uh, implementation using some some ideas from S symphony and and um, and probably the only controversial part about that is the um, uh, the, the use of annotations. So the metadata is is added in comments, um, and uh, but this is actually this is very nice. It's very cool, and it keeps uh, keeps the plugin uh, totally modular. And uh, if you come to Code Sprint, I'm sure you'll see see some of this stuff in action. Um, Entity API. Um, so this is uh, basically entity. Entity module in in core with a lot of cleanup and a, uh, there's a lot of lot of action around this um, in in the translation space I know of. Um, uh, but the the sort of the big pieces are we have sort of this uh, some simpler some simpler access is what we're getting now. Th th this stuff is is definitely in flux, um, but um, but you can read through the um, read through the documentation. Um, or actually, the best way to learn this would again come to the code sprint. There's a, there's a lot of uh, a lot of action in this area, and you'll really get to see it um, hands on. Okay, so Chris already mentioned the um, configuration management system. Um, so probably the uh, the the thing to realize is that uh, it's 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 very uh, basic. It's it's going to be very straightforward for you to take uh, what you're doing on the variable table, submitting forms, saving them in the database, and um, now have that not mixed in with your content. So obviously a, a big win for um, uh, managing sites and deployments. 
and actually pretty pretty easy to use. So there's um, some some resources there. Uh, a great article from uh, from Lee Rollins, and um, great article from actually on on Chris's slide. I recommend the article from uh, uh, Nuval um, about sort of looking at it from a features mindset. If you've been working with features a long time, um, uh, this can be a slight paradigm shift, but um, it's uh, it's simpler in some ways. So and still get get and set type a API, very straightforward. Okay, now for you module developers, this is a huge win. Um, uh, I'm, I'm probably more happy about this than even, even CMI. The uh, menu system and the routing system are now split up. Um, uh, and the routing system has been uh, kind of really brought up to date, so it's a, a lot more sophisticated. Um, uh, but we still have action, access control and, and we still have hook menu for, for adding things to the menu system. Um, but by replacing the, the routing system with uh, the Drupal, uh, Symphony 2 routing component, um, again, we get this great documentation. You can go, go and read all about uh, Symphony routes uh, today. Um, uh, it's all, all applicable. And, um, it really gives us uh, all, all sorts of advantages in terms of um, uh, not, you know, ha having a route that can can respond to, to different uh, uh, different types, etc. So, uh, and and this has uh, really enabled a, a whole bunch of other uh, uh, other modules in the system, the, the REST uh, REST system, and it kind of touches everything. But uh, at its core, it's, it's actually very very uh, very simple. There's some great, I've noticed some great Hello World. Um, blog posts have been popping up lately. Um, I can recommend um, if you want to really nail down, you're coming at this really fresh and you just want to see a practical example, see dependency injection, new routing system, kind of all thrown together. There's a, a blog post there um, uh, using Drupal 8's new route controller and the, the second one. So that's like two pages and, and you can get a great introduction. Um, or you can go really deep and go see Tim's session on Thursday. Okay, I think this is probably the last big one um, related, to, uh, related to dependency injection. Um, uh, we've m moved a lot of these global, uh, global Drupal functions uh, into uh, a service container. Uh, not too much to say, you don't really need to understand it um, except how to, how to use them and uh, there's lots of examples around and again, the Symphony, Symphony documentation is, is good. But if you want to really uh, get into some nitty gritty, um, this, is, uh, this is some pretty cool stuff um, in uh, Drupal core. Okay, and then probably a, a brief mention of forms. We've got a little bit of an object oriented wrapper around these things, um, but uh, uh, at, at its basics says there's, um, if you know form API and you know OO, uh, you can uh, extend an interface and you've got a few methods to override or implement, um, uh, including a builder form, a validator, and submitter, it's sort of like how we've done before, but instead of magically named functions, we now have them in, in uh, one object. Um, but it's actually quite, this is quite intuitive. Uh, uh, the guts of it are, are gonna make sense. Um, not, not as radical a change. And obviously there's a lot more. Um, that there's uh, plenty of APIs, um, uh, and some of these are some of these are likely to to be changing. I think uh, entity translations in 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 Flux settings and storage is is interesting. That's related to CMI around um, uh, ov overriding sort of things you might do in settings.php um, up till now to to override variables in different environments. So we have a new API for that, which is wonderful. Um, and, and lots more, so pl plenty to dig into. Um, now to wrap it all up, put it all together, uh, there's some great, great sessions hands-on. Um, the upgrading your module to Drupal 8 one is, is uh, very cool, that was given in some form in, in Sydney. Um, and then uh, uh, another one there, a lab, lab session, both lab sessions, so lots of time to sit down with a, 
sit down with a laptop and, and, uh, and actually see it work, which is, of course, the best way to learn these things. So hopefully that's enough, uh, enough of a, a grab bag. I think uh, that's plenty, plenty, to, plenty to look out for this week. Um, I just want to... Don't have a slide here, but I, get, I just want to say one more time, there is a Drupal sp there's sprinting going on uh, all over the place um, and all week as well. Um, but particularly on Friday. So if you've never been before, uh, there is no better way to really dig into this stuff, ask stupid questions, ask smart questions, and, um, and, and help is there. And if you're at all confused uh, about uh, where to go or who to talk to, uh, please grab me and I'll make sure you find, find the right spot. Uh, but uh, this is, this is the, the best week to really uh, uh, get, get some Drupal 8 under your belt. So. Thank you, Boris. Um, how did you go? Did you keep track of what you scored? Um, just going through the, the list, uh, I think if you're a site builder and you got over five, you're probably doing okay, uh, pretty well. Um, if you're a themer and you got 10, fantastic work. And if you're a developer and if you know kind of 20 of those items that we covered, then you're well on your way. Um, it doesn't matter though if you, if you don't know that many, and that's the purpose of this session. So. Um, Lots to look into. All right, so we're going to wrap up now. This is the, the bit at the end. Um, what did you think? Um, just find the session on uh, the, the website. Take the survey and, um, and tell us what you thought. Uh, yes, got a little bit of housekeeping at the end. We just want to thank some of the people from, who've helped us out with this session. From previous next, Tim Eisenhuth, um, Lee Rowlands and Kim Pepper. Um, have contributed a lot to this session and our understanding of Drupal. Um, and I also want to thank everyone who's written a really good Drupal 8 changelog because they are, I have discovered, the best way of working out often um, how something works. They are currently the best documentation we have for some issues, which is why they're in there. Um, and finally, I've been on holiday for the last week and I've spent almost the entire time writing this. Um, so I just want to thank my wife and son for not killing me. Um, Previous Next is Australia's leading Drupal service provider. We work with government and not-for-profit clients mostly, but also in the private sector. Um, Lee Rowlands was mentioned in Dries' talk. Um, he does a lot of uh, Drupal core for us, and so does Kim and, and others. Um, and we develop a public sector distribution called AGOV, which is very similar to Open Public. So finally, um, uh, that was him and this is me, and thank you for listening to us. The link is in the bottom there, and uh, please get in touch if you have any questions. Thank you.